Hey guys, welcome back to Angel Angela. And as you guys can see, we're going to be talking today about con artists. And the reason this, you know, topic, you guys, is so important, it's because um, we need to understand what a con artist is, the definition, um, people's actions, and even our own. Is it because the narcissist tells bigger lies than we do that we tend to um, get angry at them, you know, because they've invaded us. Not only have they invaded us, but society has made it seem as if being a con artist, you know, being a basically a professional liar um, is something to look up to. And because of this, people are being manipulated into believing that actions, certain actions that they do um, came from them. And even the people that do are doing the con artists, um, the manipulation, the lies, who believe their own lies, who, who are doing everything to um, bring you into this lie, they are telling themselves even a bigger lie to themselves. And this causes confusion, anger, and it just simply pisses people off. As I woke up today, you guys, I actually decided to put some makeup on. So a little bit about my background, um, makeup, fashion, um, all these things have been things that, you know, are a part of who I am and um, things that I grew up on, like my grandmother used to design, you know, wedding dresses and um, she used to do things of that nature and she used to fix a lot of stuff and um, she taught me how to even make my own clothes as a kid. So, you know, I was making my own little jean jackets and my own pants, like hippie pants, like I would do all type of things. I liked, you know, um, like the Asian attire and because I enjoy doing these things, when makeup was introduced to me, it was like, wow, like I have to get my fingers all over it. And as the generation kept going and things start changing, I'm not taking the time to really think about it and saying like, oh, how did I go from wearing mascara to like a full beat face of makeup? And I, I believed in my mind because I was wearing makeup, you know, since I could remember, since I could get my hands on it, I didn't realize the impact of it. And then, you know, when social media came around, it was like, I want to do a review on all these products. I want to do reviews on all these products. And it became, you know, I want to do reviews. I want to do makeup tutorials. And your mind is moving and it's racing. And while you're making plans of doing all these things, you're not thinking of yourself in a malicious way or anything like that. You're just thinking these are things that I like. So after my situation with the narcissist you know you get in those modes where you just don't want to put makeup on you don't want to do anything you know you're looking at yourself in the mirror you're just like what the heck is going on you know what did I just go through you're shocked you're not worried about wearing makeup and these things um you have to look in the mirror and look at yourself and you realize like this is who I am you start looking at certain things and you're like Maybe they didn't like me because of this, maybe this. And you're, you're criticizing yourself. You're criticizing yourself. And when you fall in love with yourself again and get to know who you are and you start to build your own um, individuality based on the circumstances that you went through and you decide that you're not going to let those circumstances um keep you going towards that herd that you're going to stand out because you're going to be yourself once you stand out um it's because you're confident in your true authentic self that's why you stand out and you will get positive energy and when people the narcissist stands out 
even if it's for negative attention, they're standing out. And a lot of times um, in those moments, we don't really even realize with me, in my experience, you guys, when I finally got back to myself, who, you know, I decided that I was going to be, that doesn't make me a change of character. That means I'm changing my circumstances. So I guess I am changing a part of me because I don't want to be in those circumstances anymore. You know, not saying that I want to be, you know, that I'm trying to step on other people to get to a better life. I just don't want to be in the circumstances that I was forced into. If you have family that are narcissists and are con artists, you understand um, the meaning of wanting to leave. That doesn't make you a con artist for trying to change your life. It's the narcissist that they use people to get those things in the most malicious ways because their lies get bigger and bigger and bigger to the point where they just can't hold back. And when I realized that, I realized, wow, like every time I would wake up in the morning and I would say, I can't leave the house without putting, you know, a full beat of face. Like, I don't care what people think. I, I'm going to use, you know, I'm, gonna, I'm going to um, contour my face. I am going to, you know, do my eyebrows. I am going to make sure, like you know, my lips look plumped and you're doing all these things and you think that you are doing them because you enjoy doing them. In my circumstance, I thought because I grew up, you know, into fashion and making clothes that I was just a fashionista. And when the makeup came and was introduced to me, I thought, hey, you know, this is going to enhance me even more because this is already my personality. So you're like conned into thinking that you um, really want to do this because it's your personality when in actuality, um, you were conned into thinking that. That's why the con artist um, cult is so very um, contagious. It's contagious. It's a disease. So I realized when I broke out of that matrix, that dimension, that one dimensional dimension, and I got to know myself and I completely, um, you know, just decided to be natural, but not because I was trying to make a statement or anything. I just decided that I, I love myself and I didn't think I needed any makeup because of, you know, because I love myself. I don't I don't know how else to explain it. I used to feel like I couldn't leave the house because I might have blemish or something. And, uh, you know, I wanted everything to be perfect. I wanted to do that. And I realized it's like putting a fake smile. You're trying to make sure you look perfect for others. And that that attention it's luring a lot of other con artists and dangerous people to you. So you're not really, you're basically playing a game, but you're not really trying to play the game. You're just thinking it's part of who I am. And I realized that in my experience and today, you guys, that's why I'm making this video. I'm still kind of sick. I went to the store that um, I usually go to in my neighborhood. And since I'm sick, like I told you guys, I went in there and got like NyQuil and, you know, things to help me, some teas. And the guy that always sees me, um, you know, when I go in there, I usually, you know, don't wear makeup like I told you guys. But I have a lot of makeup. <laughs> don't get me wrong. And if I want to go out to a special occasion or something... I will put some makeup on. That's all it is. I'm still myself, just without the makeup. You know, I still dress the same. Everything's the same. The only difference is that I have makeup on today. So, because I don't wear makeup, when I do finally wear makeup, I feel like a different person, literally. When I change, like, 
you know, dye my hair or do something different. I feel like different. I feel good about myself. I feel confident. But I'm not using those things to con people or so I think, right? Because you're luring people in with that confidence now that you have that makeup or that hairstyle without knowing, without knowing. But the narcissist, they're an actor. They're faking the confidence. You know, I, I, I'm not faking any type of confidence because I'm that same person with or without the makeup. The narcissist, without their mask, they don't know who they are. They, be, they have became that mask. And as I went out into the store and I started to get different, you know, like different energy, different vibes from men in particular, especially, um, you know, when I went into a store that I usually always go to and I'm dressed the same and everything is the same. I'm not provocative or anything. And the only difference is the makeup that I have on today. And when I went in there, um, the dude that always talks to me, like friendly, he um, saw me in a different way, in a more, um, you know, in a more sexual way. And that's what made me realize that, you know, I was in a sense, over-sexualizing myself just by wearing makeup. And that was kind of weird. And I was like, wow, like, in a sense, I'm a con artist too, without knowing. And I say this, you guys, because when I look at my old self, the the person who was living in a first dimensional um, plane, I think about um, all the moments where I was wearing makeup and things like that not realizing that I was attracting all kinds of energies to me without even knowing because these energies know that I do not know myself and that I have been conned into thinking that, you know, I enjoy these things when in actuality I don't, you know? Just like people that get conned out of money, um... They're doing it out of love, you know, because this person is showing that they care about them and you're just doing it out of being a good person. So when the person finally tells you after they got what they wanted, hey, I didn't mean any of it. Um, That's your fault. You shouldn't just be trusting of people like that. You shouldn't be trusting of people. When that person cons you and they talk to you like that, that's heartbreaking. And because you didn't know that you were attracting attention to you because you didn't know yourself. It's like you got double conned, you know, because you conned yourself as well, in a sense. And that's kind of how I looked at my situation, you know, just how I looked at my situation. And I think that sometimes a lot of us don't look at our actions as well, although they're not as bad as, you know, these narcissists because they're actually actors. So... They, um, they're actually, it's like being in a movie. It's like, you didn't know that you were an extra in the movie, but the narcissist is like, oh, I'm, I'm signing up. I want to be in the movie. I want to be in the game. Even if they don't get anything out of it, even if it's commission, it's like, oh, I'm on commission right now. So this is why, you guys, it's so important to forget everything that you've been told, forget everything you ever thought was right, and figure everything out in life from scratch. Because when you deal with con artists, narcissists, and you start gathering information that you never knew, you realize there's a lot of things that you never knew. So you have to forget your beliefs and things and recreate who you are and find your purpose they light their way to get to you to even be attracted to them because of the fake confidence that they're showing you so the first thing that a narcissist has to do to con you is that they have to insult your intelligence they have to pick at you they have to know 
how smart you are or what your beliefs are so they can categorize you and they can know what they can do and say to get you on their side. The narcissist is constantly changing faces with every face that they meet because they are a confident actor. And as they're walking in this movie, everyone is becoming part of their movie. And if that person chooses to play a role, it's kind of like, well, welcome to my world. You want to play, we can play as you, you know, as long as you want. And you can leave whenever you choose to leave if you want to. They actually know they're lying. These people actually know they're lying and they're using um, that knowledge to um, get what they want. Um, it's so easy to be blindsided. But they keep feeding you lies and things to suck you in the moment that you feel as if something isn't right. The moment you start to question anything, they get angry because they have to keep up with the lie. They have to keep that confidence going. If you end up catching on to their fake um, confidence, they will insult your intelligence about you questioning them. They will get angry for you questioning them. Once you get angry for questioning that con actor, confidence confident actor, once you question them, they are going to say, hey, I think this, 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 or this about you. If you feed into that BS, you have started to play with them and you have just entered their show because they do not care as long as you interact with them. In their mind, they are the magician. So if they can get you to believe them, which is coming to a mutual understanding and just ending neutral in the end without, you know, you're questioning what they're doing. They're confusing you. And eventually they might even apologize. They might even actually tell you, yes, I did it. I'm sorry. I did do it. I did cheat. I'm sorry. Let's, let's go to counseling. They're telling you these things knowing that they're going to literally go into their closet now and put on a whole nother mask now that they're um, in a neutral understanding with you and now you're going to counseling. They do not care about anything that you do and say because the end results, they already know. They have already chosen the life they're going to live. Anything that they've told you about people in their past and things like that, they have put many different faces for those people and they have stolen a lot of those different people's identities. So even if we're getting out of this relationship, you know, knowing that we are also learning a lot about ourselves, we can actually now spot these people and realize they're not who they say they are automatically because they can't keep up that character for too long. So the very first thing that the narcissist is going to try to do in order to con you is insult your intelligence. Insult your intelligence. Even if they have a degree, even if they, if I'm, I'm sorry, even if they do not have a degree and you have a degree, they are going to insult you on your degree and still make it seem as if I could have did that. I could have got that if I wanted to. They believe that they could do anything they want because they've gathered information from others. They believe that that information is enough to keep them going in life. And the only information really that they learned is how to manipulate, you know, but if you tell them something or you tell them you want to do something with yourself, you want to follow a dream, they will tell you that they can follow that dream too. The narcissist con artist is living their own nightmare and um, they're trying to stop you from achieving your dreams. 
So that's the first step to knowing that you're dealing with a con artist. It's them trying to insult your intelligence. And this is um, the beginning of their act. With narcissist con artists, um, they will start to tell you what others have done for them. They will start to compare you to others. And you might have not known this person for too long. You might have just met them. And they're telling you about their lifestyle. They're telling you about, you know, the kind of people that still want them, the kind of people they do business with, the kind of people that, you know, have helped them, you know, with different businesses and things like that. They tell you about all these people. But the thing about the con artists is that all of their made up friends and all these people in their circle, that they act as if they have these people are, you know, people who have the their best interest for them and things like that. The thing about all these people is that everyone is being conned and by them comparing you to these people, it says that not only have they been gathering information from these other people they have conned, but they're trying to make you believe as if they have this great relationship with those people. And in actuality, they have conned all of those people. Another thing about the narcissist is that once you ask them about maybe their childhood or where they grew up or um, where they're from, sometimes they even fabricate where they live, um, where they're from, and they just basically start telling you um, the places they lived based on the past supplies, and this can be friends, anyone. So if you're their friend and they've been to your house, they're going to fabricate like that's their house. They're going to start taking pictures in your bathroom, you know, um, taking pictures in front of, you know, strangers' vehicles. So um, everything that they do is to make themselves look a certain way and they're willing to um, play this fake confidence role to make you believe that they're happy and that their um, happiness um, relies on the conning, which really is the con artist is being is is they're basically conning themselves. So um, and they're okay with it. So that's what you guys have to understand is that they're okay with it. They're willing to die to con people. They're willing to go all out. They um, have no regard towards life. And that's the danger of portraying fake confidence. Because in order for you to fake confidence, you have to lie. The more you lie, the bigger the lie gets. Even if we're down, um, you know, we learn from those things and we grow. The narcissist cannot put the act down. They can't anymore because they've lied too much. And some of them will even tell you, you know, that they're willing to die for it because they know they've already done enough dirt because they know what their end is going to be. So as much as they want to keep that smile going, it's always been a frown and it's always going to be a frown. Um, they will literally make you feel as if your confidence is not real. And it will show you, you guys, that it doesn't matter how far the narcissist gets. These people are never happy. Once they get there from faking it and from the fake confidence, what's going to happen is they're going to be miserable and they're going to attack others. And they're going to think that they're getting joy out of hurting others. And one day, they're not even going to have joy from hurting others. 
There's going to be no joy to even do that. And they're just going to want to either take their life or want someone to take theirs. And they are basically, you know, going to be living on a string, needing someone to give them light. And you will find people that will try to give them light. And those people will become so miserable that eventually their smile will turn into a frown too. So the narcissist, you guys, as we all know, is a con artist. What makes them a con artist? They're fake, confident artist, actor, energy. They are actors. They act confident when they truly aren't confident. They just need to get what they want. And they know that people are very materialistic. They know that people, um, you know, can be easily manipulated to believe anything you tell them. And when they begin to give you um, small lies, which is usually, you know, in childhood, as they grow up, they start to lie. The lies become bigger and bigger and bigger to the point where they don't know if they have became the lie or if they're just doing it to get what they want. So as they're conning you, they're conning themselves. Um, one thing about the narcissist um, con artist, um, in order for us to keep going, is that a con artist, you guys, is someone who lies and cheats and persuades people to do things in order to get what they want. Since the narcissist is persuading you and fooling you, um, by the time you, f you realize that you became part of the act, that you basically, the narcissist already had a setup. They already knew how the ending was going to go. They already knew that different acts are going to come and they already knew the different scenarios of the results that they might get if they if someone ends up finding out that their confidence is not real they already know the results of it but they're enjoying watching you um trying to figure it out and by the time you do in their minds they feel as if it's too late for you because even if you tell others, you know, I've already engraved myself in you so deep that it doesn't seem as if I forced you to do these things. It seems as if you gave them to me because you love me. You gave them to me because you wanted me to succeed. You gave them to me because you wanted me to be great. You gave them to me because a part of you knew that I deserved it. Because even though they know they lied to get those things, they feel as if they always gave you a choice. They feel as if it's your fault for not understanding that they aren't who they say they are. So they're mad at you because... They don't even know who they are. They're angry at you because you don't, they don't know themselves. So a narcissist is a very dangerous person to be around you guys because no matter the amount of success that these people have because they do not know their authentic self, they're willing to put your life in danger. They're willing to um, go after you. These are the people in these companies that are firing people because they're not friends with them. And it's not about friendship. It's business. 
Some people do not know how to do business. And this is why some people don't want narcissistic family members in their business because they will destroy it. They will destroy it. They will destroy those things for them. And the people that, you know, cheat their way through, they know how to cheat their way through, but they do not know how to keep it. They do not know how to keep it, you guys, because everything that they have said and done has always been fabricated. So this is where you'll see their karma come in. And this is where you'll also see that they don't really care about their karma. And the karma only makes them more angry. It, It pisses them off. You know, it makes them go and chase after innocent people. They go and, um, you know, their lies and their negative energy catches up to them. And um, everything that they do in the dark always comes to light. So I hope that this video, you guys, was helpful for you guys. I hope that you guys can um, pay attention to the red flags when someone is conning you. And always know why it is that you do the things that you do. Know why it is that you go to this job, why is it that you, you know, you enjoy this, find the things that make you happy, find the things that, you know, follow your dreams. And that's all I can really say is follow your dreams, you guys, discover your individuality, and never be a follower, always be a leader. So I'll talk to you guys on the next one. Bye.